been a while since I did a video focused on a single company. As with the market being as volatile as it has been lately, I've been focused on strategy videos. Still, one gaming company has caught my eye, and I think we could be looking at a 60 to 100% return on this stock over the next 12 months. Here we go. So the gaming industry is growing rapidly and could be worth over $200 billion in 2025. And with so many gamers stuck at home during the pandemic, digital sales have increased substantially over the last year. With EA reporting 52% of their full game sales being digital, Take-Two reporting 55% and Sony 51%. But Activision trumps them all with around 90% of their revenue coming from digital sales. Activision Blizzard is the largest game only developer in the USA and Europe and one of the few to be included in the S&P 500. The company is made up of several studios, namely Treyarch, Infinity Ward and High Moon Studios. The brand is well known for their Call of Duty franchise with Cold War being the biggest setting game over the last year. They also have Crash Bandicoot, Diablo, World of Warcraft, Overwatch and Candy Crush, to name a few. The biggest part of these franchises is the online multiplayer, which has created a massive online community and no doubt you've seen some of the crazy antics from these games on YouTube. It's these online modes that have been driving their sales up massively over the pandemic and the company reported that 81% of their annual revenue from 2020 came from digital sales. This isn't just for game sales, but add-ons and DLC through their digital game stores, such as Battle.net. Digital sales are growing much faster than hardware, with PlayStation sales declining by 37% in 2021, Xbox 46% and PC 52%. Historically, Activision has outperformed the S&P 500 and their competitors with an average compound annual growth rate of 30%. Their year-on-year -year earnings from 2019 to 2020 show significant improvement throughout and when reviewing the latest figures in 2021, they continue to outperform the competition in revenue, profit and net income. But despite their performance, Activision stock has taken a battering over the last few months, trading at around $61 currently, almost half of their $104 high in March. So what gives? While the company has been under the spotlight this year due to allegations of sexual misconduct in the workplace, which is the last thing a company needs in a woke cancel culture. And this was made worse by their management denying the problems existed. Employees are calling for unionization and have staged mass walkouts in protests, such as in November, in response to the Wall Street Journal reporting that CEO Bobby Kotick knew about widespread sexual harassment and a toxic work environment, but let it go unchecked for years. There are reports of him threatening to kill an employee, along with failing to report a rape allegation, being the worst offences. Shareholders have filed California regulatory lawsuits not be made aware of the problems and the SEC are now evaluating the company. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission filed a suit against the company who settled with them on the same day for $18 million. I have to wonder what they brought to light and how damning the news must have been for the company to settle so quickly. Activision have said they will continue to work with investigators, but a major issue continues to be with staffing, as in the first quarter this year, they laid off around 190 employees, 2% of their workforce, in order to cut costs. And more recently, in October, as a result of the allegations, the company fired a further 20 employees. Activision made the headlines again where they laid off 12 temporary quality testers from Raven Software one of the core duty teams, resulting in yet another mass walkout by employees who claim that these staff were let go in good standing, meaning it wasn't a result of underperformance and they were selected at random and should be rehired with permanent contracts. Activision has been developing a reputation of putting the needs of the company above the well-being of their staff. And this is not atypical of big corporate companies, but the game industry is a creative one. And I think if you fought a favour with the talent, the developers, testers and engineers, then the product is going to be affected in a negative way. The employees want Kotick to step down, but the board back him. And that's far from ideal and a major reason for their walkout and why they want to unionise. The major console developers have also come out against Activision, with Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, Doug Bowser, head of Nintendo America, and Jim Ryan, boss of PlayStation, all condemning the recent revelations. 
If bans materialise, then Activision could be looking at a major loss of significant revenue sources. But the reduction of staff isn't new for Activision. In 2018, despite a record net revenue of $7.5 billion, Activision was one of the many stocks to take a dive. No thanks to the toddler-in-chief's trade war with China, along with corporate tax rate cuts that caused companies to move funds back to the US so they can buy back their own stock, further inflating their own stock prices. So, in March 2019, after their stock tanked, Activision laid off nearly 800 employees, around 8% of their workforce. Activision aimed to increase the size of their teams on their biggest franchises, enabling teams to accelerate the pace and quality of content, cutting back on initiatives that were not meeting expectations, as well as reducing certain non-development and administrative related costs. It's hard to argue with the result, as the company revenues increased, the stock went on an upwards trend right through to the pandemic, to their high of $102 at the beginning of the year. So laying off staff may be justified if it allowed the company to focus on their most successful content. The question is whether the success of the company outweighs the recent revelations and risks to the company through their current management, and whether the stock has been oversold as a result. In their quarter three report, Activision announced a profit of 82 cents per share and they beat estimates by 14 cents. And they continue to grow and surpass estimates with their quarter three revenue growing by 6% year on year and now exceeding $2 billion. So Activision are still delivering on growth. But they warned that their quarter four report could be downhill, blaming game delays such as the indefinite delay of Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2, denied, which they blame on the scandals and staff exits. The situation isn't helped by China's crackdown on computer games, which could seriously impact their biggest online community of Chinese gamers. Activision's Call of Duty Vanguard was released to disappointing numbers, with sales dropping 40% compared to Cold War last year, making it the worst Call of Duty release since Modern Warfare in 2007. It's speculation as to whether this is a result of poor interest, competition or the company's current reputation. There is a general consensus on Wall Street that Activision remains a buy, with a target price ranging from $65 to $125, and I found an average consensus of $93.49, which would bring them back in line with the start of the year. But the stock continues to trade below the minimum target price, so have the analysts failed to account for the company's situation? Well, the drive towards a metaverse suggests to me that there's going to be competition for the time consumers spend on the online experience and gaming industry is fully yet to capitalise on this concept. In order for gaming companies to compete with these overlapping markets, they need to make tough decisions to remain successful. Activision has done this by repeating their 2018 strategy by focusing on their successful titles and divisions. With the momentum in the gaming industry from last year slowing, delayed releases and recent news, Activision deserved a correction. And the year so far has seen the stock underperform compared to Take-Two and Electronic Arts. But Activision has historically been one of the best cash generating businesses in the industry. It is currently trending below the lowest estimates and at just 17 times earnings, 5 times sales and 2.64 times book value compared to the industry as a whole is technically undervalued. The lowest estimates predict a 25% growth and it could potentially double over the next 12 months. It is possible for Activision to recover and the brand itself holds a lot of value in their existing titles. They need to implement some significant changes and a change of CEO is fully justified by recent reports and it would be the most time effective solution to their current problems. I don't see how the board can keep Coticon if the investigations continue, the stock continues to fall and they can't keep their talent or income streams. Now where the stock has come down it seems to have hit a level of resistance around the $60 mark and I'm inclined to see this as an opportunity to buy into the company at a weak point. I've already started buying, but due to the risks with the current situation, I'm growing my position over the next quarter, holding enough back to take advantage of what could be a big buying opportunity if it dips again in quarter four earnings. If Kotick is shown the door, we could see a significant jump in the stock price and I want to be holding some of the stock for a moment like that. So that's my take for now, but if you have any thoughts, please comment below, let me know. Also, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos. Until next time.